Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher. Well, have you ridden your bike lately? I got three people on the sofa who definitely have. Susan Pollock, Principal Planner for the Planning Department, and Mark Hecker, you're a commissioner with uh, the Bike Commission. Yep. And Paul Fillion, every time I see you, you're either doing food trucks, light rail, bicycles. What else do you do? Amtrak. Oh, Amtrak, that's yeah. right, and that's where you two met. Mm -hmm. So the idea, though, is that we take a comprehensive approach to our planning, right, Susan? So that all of those things that he's involved in building ultimately had a plan behind them. Correct. Where did bikes fit into that plan 15, 20 years ago? You know, I moved here probably about 20 years ago, and, and I began cycling, road cycling, and uh, it was just assumed you rode on the street, there were no bike lanes, there weren't even probably a thought of having bike lanes way back then. Everything was about the car. Well, in fact, I remember first time we met was over a special permitting committee where you were bringing the bike races in. Right. And it was all about closing the streets right. to make it safe. Right. So where are we today? So we've come a long way. Um, before, I would say maybe about four years ago, um, no, actually more, it was like three, um, I think city council really decided to get serious about cycling. Um, they realized that it, it, uh, it, was, a, it was a need. Um, we are an urban city, uh, our downtown, the population is growing, and to get businesses down there and people to live down there, they realized that cycling was something, a key ingredient that they had to have. Um, so about three years ago, the Norfolk uh, Bicycling and Pedestrian Trails Commission was mm -hmm. formed, and, and uh, Mark is a, a commissioner. So that kind of got things started. We, had, we started to have Bike Month every May. We have mm -hmm. Bike Month. Uh, we also um, amended our zoning ordinance. We didn't require any new businesses to have bike parking. Last time I think uh, we met on air, That's we right. talked about amending the uh, Norfolk zoning ordinance to require all new businesses, or even if they're doing a, you have a building, they're doing a change of use, they're required to have both long-term and short-term parking. Um, then shortly after that, commission started, or the council started to get real serious and said, we need a bike plan. The bike plan we have in place was done in 1984. It sits on the shelf and nothing's been done. Um, so about two years ago, um, a consultant, a very well-known, uh, nationally renowned uh, consultant tool design group out of, we worked with them uh, out of their group in Washington, but they've got uh, offices all over the United States. They've done bike plans for uh, Pennsylvania, for Seattle, for Denver, so they're very good at what they do, and, and we hired them, and we began uh, the, the making of the Norfolk Strategic Bike Plan. And that wasn't by you guys sitting on the fifth floor drawing pictures, right? No, not at all. The first thing we did was we held several uh, public meetings. Um, we were uh, in Park Place. We went up to Tarleton, up in Ocean View, uh, and then our final one was down at the, uh, the Aquatic Center down on the south side. Uh, tool also made available to anyone that could get online. Uh, it was called Wikimap. So it was a map that you could get on and you could put uh, the routes where you rode, where you wanted to ride, and what the obstacles were. Uh, Tool was very pleased with the results. They said they probably had more results uh, from the Wikimap program that Norfolk did than they had ever had before. It was almost a 800 comments. Wow, so there is an appetite for it. Absolutely. We got a, a lot of hits. Our, our uh, public hearings were uh, very enthusiastically attended. People were very um, dedicated to cycling and, and getting facilities in Norfolk. Okay, now, <coughs> Susan, how'd you get here? I drove today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and there was a reason for that, which we're going to come back to. So, Paul, are you riding a bike? Yes, I do. You had two boys. They yes. ride all the time, yes. right? Yes, we take them out any, any chance we can. What kind of bike riding do you do? <clears throat> More recreational. I, I'm not a commuter. It doesn't work for me, but I, I work with a lot of commuters and I'm glad to see them you know, bring their bike in. And we've got, we work amongst diehard commuters that are out there rain or shine. But uh, more re recreational with my boys, and we, we get out when we can, and uh, it's been fun. You know, showing them how to ride and, and uh, you know, sharing the rules of the road and, and making sure they're safe out there. Now, when uh, my kid, girls were your boy's age, we had a two-mile bike ride that the turning point was a donut shop. So, Right. They we, defeated I bribed the whole them, purpose. I bribed them a couple of times with a Dairy Queen. You know, <laughs> with a Dairy Queen. Yeah. So you drive, ride with a purpose in mind. Okay, Mark Hecker, you came mm -hmm. onto the commission because you're a bike rider. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you get to the studio today? Uh, I drove as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I assume you know, you're interested in, in finding out why, but yeah. uh, you know, the the reason for that is that 
it's difficult to bike in this city, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you are somebody who is not a very, I'd say, aggressive or experienced rider because the infrastructure that we have to support bike commuting or uh, recreational riding for people who are a little bit less experienced really isn't isn't adequate when you, especially when you compare it to you know what they have in other cities in this country, and and really when you look at other countries where we are in the world, uh, we are so far behind in terms of what has really become, I'd say, a norm uh, for this kind of. of now, when did you start bike riding? Uh, I've been doing it since I was probably like three, so okay. you know, around the time that I could, I could, I could, you know, swim and walk. Um, I really started using it as a commuting medium when I started living in Germany. Uh, which was about 15 years ago, and that's what really opened up my eyes to what was possible. So that it was more than just a recreational. Sport. Oh yeah, I mean it was it was commuting. Uh, it was you know you'd have rush hour on the bike lanes, you know that were integrated with the sidewalks and the streets. They had their own signals. Uh, it was really an advanced system, and you know really when I came back to the United States, I missed that. I I found that it it was so hard to incorporate what was a very healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Uh, into just my regular routines because the infrastructure wasn't there. I came back to the United States, was living in Washington, D.C., which, you know, at 15 years ago was relatively, uh, for U.S. standards, a somewhat bikeable city. I got hit by cars twice Whoa. when I was in Washington, D.C. I would Washington, get off the bike after that. Yeah, and, and, you know, I still persisted, you know, and I, I moved to New York City and you could ride in, in New York. Both of those cities, incidentally, have had since then fantastic Amazing. bicycle programs. So, you know, I've, I've been in a bunch of different cities uh, as, over the course of my career, living in a lot of different places, uh, and I'm really excited to see that Norfolk is finally making this turn to recognize that you have to do this. You can't just say this is something for a, you know, a fringe minority group of people. Mm -hmm. It affects everybody if you want to have healthier lifestyles, if you want to have access. And frankly, if you want to be competitive with what other cities are offering in terms of amenities and uh, access to, to infrastructure. Now, I know when I st first started getting engaged in my bike riding, I went out and bought a very nice bike, and mm -hmm. I was purely recreational. But when I thought of my bike journey, it was sharrows and la bike lanes and that kind of thing. So I was thinking of the asphalt or my favorite place to ride is in the cemeteries for recreation. And there's you mm -hmm. know, awesome places to ride. But you mentioned... The, if I want to go to a restaurant and I'm going to lock it up on the bushes or where, you know? Or in your case, you used to commute. I did. Uh, I commuted on my own. It was a 12 mile route. I actually went three miles. I went commuted from Ocean View to downtown. Uh, and I would go three miles out of my way largely because the direct route was so prohibitively unsafe. Okay. Uh, and I was very, I was comfortable doing it, but there were definitely sections of that where I had to be really careful, and, and admittedly, I was really nervous uh, about going over those sections. But um, I persisted, and I was willing to do it. And you know, then my my lifestyle changed because we had a baby, and not only do you have to bring more stuff, but you really start to question: Is it worth the risk mm -hmm. of going out and riding on streets that are inherently unsafe to support this? It's not really the distance that prohibits me, and in fact, our company has showers and has I was ways. Your to incorporate it into your lifestyle, but I can't incorporate it into my routine, even though it's only 12 miles and it's flat, uh, and the weather generally here is very, very good. I'd be more than willing to do it, but I'm frankly not willing to ride with a bicycle trailer or a baby on the back, um, or even really, I should, you need to question doing it as a father. Should something happen to me at this point, I have a responsibility to a child, uh, taking those risks on roads where the drivers um, you know, tend to drive somewhat aggressively. Mm -hmm. uh, not all of them, but there's certainly the, the people who do. And you don't really have the space uh, to hold your own lane or, or have right. access to that right away. So where does it begin? Well, and, and just to follow off of what Mark is saying, you know, I'm, I'm I guess what you call one of the serious riders. There's mm -hmm. not really a road in Norfolk that I won't ride it and I feel pretty safe but that's because I've been doing it for 20 years but I hear so many people say well I've got to take the long road I've got to you know I won't ride just because you know it's just not safe out there and I've worked with many beginner cyclists um, and you know taking them out on the roads and I can feel they're very nervous and and I think the the feeling is the more people we can get to ride, the safer it will be. The more people that ride, the safer it will be, and so on. Well, so I will be candid with you. That when I started riding a bike, I became much more sensitive as a car driver once yes. I was behind mm -hmm. the wheel. 
Absolutely. So there's that, because it is, there's that, I mean, that's one of the first conflicts you got to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I almost hate to ask you this, because I'm not going to tell you what I do. Can you pop up on the sidewalk when you're feeling that way? I don't. I, I, I don't feel the need to. Okay. So what role does the city play then in the execution of the plan versus, like we've already talked about, employers having showers or restaurants having bike racks or... Well, so now we have our bike plan and the, the core of the bike Which is a great plan. looking book on your lap, okay, okay. not on the shelf. <laughs> no, and it, it is, and that's the key. It is a strategic plan. It is not a comprehensive plan. It's not a plan that's going to show you every single road in Norfolk that we're going to want to have a bike lane or bike facility on. It is 12 quarters, and the concept is to have it done within five to ten years. We have already, uh, we are hopefully are already getting started. Um, and the goal is to have a first loop in place by May of 2016. Uh, the loop That's right go, around the corner. It is around the corner, and we're, we're working hard on accomplishing that goal. We met with, you know, you've got uh, the, in, in, in the bike plan, you've got the 12 quarters, and they, stay, they explain what type of facility there should be, a bike lane, a separated bike lane, a buffered bike lane. There's a lot of different types of bike lanes we're talking about, and we will have a good example of all of those okay. within the bike plan. Are within the different uh, corridors, um, but the first uh, loop that we're going to do is going to be 35th Street. Now that was not one of the 12 quarters, but that was something that was in the works already. We've got several bike plans or bike facilities that are were already in um, in okay. ongoing before uh, we started the bike plan. So it'll be 35th Street, Collie, uh, Cross Only, and then up Llewellyn. Um, and again, it's it's a great loop. It's a 4.4 mile loop. It's a good example of all the different types of facilities we'll see as we continue to develop the rest of the corridors within the plan. Well, and as Mark was saying, I think when you look at the car traffic through, the natural tendency is to try to replicate that. But in the case with Llewellyn, it's better to go up Llewellyn than it is to keep going up Granby. Yeah, and Llewellyn, it, Llewellyn, the south side of Llewellyn, was one of the most, uh, when we did the public meetings and when we did the uh, wiki map, one of the most popular recommended or requested streets. And then Granby was probably if, from the north onward the most requested street to be improved that would that will be and that is our next effort once we get the loop done we're working on a grant to do Granby up to Ward's Corner and then we actually were working with our I think it was our utility folks who said hey we're going to be doing actually not not utility public works folks they're going to be doing some paving they said hey isn't that where a let's bike loop it. is going to be let's do it exactly all right so for those that just got the bike for the holiday or they got holiday money and they're going to buy a bike, mm -hmm. Norfolk is the place to do it. Absolutely. But we got a lot of coming together to do and to really make sure that people realize that they have to share the road no matter what they're on, a bike mm -hmm. or a car, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Thanks Absolutely. a lot for the work you guys are doing. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for joining us.